I see a lot of kids with poison ivy. So I'm here today standing in front of a tree covered with poison ivy to talk about what is poison ivy, how to identify it so you can avoid it, and what to do if you do get it. There are three plants that grow in the United States that cause an allergic rash. Poison ivy, poison oak, and poison zumac. All three belong to the Toxicodendron genus. There are two types of poison ivy. Eastern poison ivy, which grows on the ground and climbs up trees, and Western poison ivy, which generally grows on the ground. You can find poison ivy of one type or the other in most of the United States. There are two types of poison oak, which grow on the west coast and the southeast. Poison oak does not grow in the northeast. Poison zumac can be found all along the east coast, from Texas to Maine, but it grows mostly in swampy wet areas. Today I'm going to focus on poison ivy, although the prevention and treatment that I will discuss applies to all three types. 80 to 90 percent of people will develop an allergic rash after being exposed to poison ivy. It affects people of all ethnicities and skin types. What people react to is an oil called urushiol, which is found on the leaves, stems, and roots of the poison ivy plant. Contact with urushiol causes an allergic reaction and people can develop a rash from hours to up to a week after exposure, depending on prior exposure and the severity of your reaction. You can get the poison ivy rash even if you've not been exposed to the poison ivy plant, as the oil can get on clothing, shoes, tools, and pets. Touching an item that has urushiol oil on it will transfer the oil onto your hand, and you can then spread it to other places on your body. A common thing that happens is that the family dog walks through poison ivy and gets urushiol oil on their fur. Dogs don't develop a poison ivy rash, but when you pet your dog, you can transfer the oil onto your fingers. People don't get the rash on the palms of their hands or the pads of their fingers as the skin there is thicker and resistant to poison ivy, but they can transfer the oil from their fingers to other parts of their body by touching their face, their arms, their legs, or even their genitals while they're going to the bathroom, and they can develop a rash at those places. If you've never been exposed to poison ivy before, it can take from several days to up to a week to develop the rash. If you've been exposed to poison ivy previously, you're considered sensitized and your immune system will respond more quickly, sometimes developing a rash within hours of exposure. People get itchy, raised red papules or bumps that sometimes appear in lines where they brush against the plant. The papules can go on to become vesicles or blisters, and there can be significant swelling. The liquid in the blisters does not spread the rash, but people can keep getting more papules by re-exposure from touching shoes, tools, or pets that have the urushiol oil on them. Urushiol can stay on things for many months, up to years, and the only way to remove it is by washing the item with soap and water. The best way to avoid poison ivy is to recognize the plant and stay away from it. The poison ivy plant has a compound leaf with three leaflets emerging from the same spot. The middle leaflet has a longer stalk than the two side leaflets. The leaves are usually red in the spring, turn green in the summer, and then orange, yellow, or red in the fall. The edges of the poison ivy leaves can be smooth or have jagged edges. The surface can be glossy or dull. Poison ivy plant roots can look hairy or smooth and are often exposed. The roots, stems, leaves, flowers, and berries of poison ivy all contain urushiol oil and should be avoided. You can also breathe in urushiol if you are near where poison ivy is being burned, and this can cause a severe reaction in your lungs. If you know you might be exposed to poison ivy, there are barrier creams available that you can apply prior to exposure. It's important to avoid ongoing exposure by removing all oil from clothing, footwear, tools, and pets. If you have been exposed to poison ivy, you should remove contaminated clothing and shoes as soon as possible. And you should wash your whole body with a soapy face cloth using Technu soap, lava soap, fels naphtha, or dishwashing soap to remove the oil from your skin. Be sure to wash well under your fingernails to remove any oil that could cause ongoing exposure. Mild cases of poison ivy limited to a small portion of the body, can be treated with a topical steroid cream. Over-the-counter topical products such as calamine lotion and oatmeal baths help decrease the itchiness and may shorten the duration of symptoms. Calamine is a mineral powder that contains zinc and iron and has astringent and anti-itch properties. Oatmeal is made from the oat grain, which contains a polyphenol called 
abenanthramine, which has anti-inflammatory properties. Burrow solution, sold under the trade name Domburo, contains aluminum acetate, which is a topical astringent that can help dry weeping lesions. Oral antihistamines such as diphenhydramine, loratadine, and cetirizine are often used to help relieve the itching associated with poison ivy, although there is limited evidence to support their effectiveness. You should seek medical attention if the rash is severe or widespread, if it affects your eyes, mouth, or genitals, if the blisters are oozing pus or purulent fluid, if you develop a fever, or if you're not getting better within two to three weeks after when the rash started. Severe or widespread cases of poison ivy require treatment with oral steroids. Oral steroids can have significant side effects and should only be taken when prescribed by a medical provider. Treatment should include initially higher doses of prednisone followed by a slow taper over 12 to 14 days. Symptoms should improve within two days of starting the prednisone, but if you stop the prednisone after a few days without tapering the dose, the rash will come rebounding back. I hope you found this information helpful. Please call your doctor or seek medical attention if you have poison ivy that is severe or it is not improving with over-the-counter treatments.